Okay, so we have talked about least, we have talked about set. Of course, we have different classes as well for different structures, and this is a famous one. Now, there's one more which is called map. Now, map is not an implementation or it does not extend collection interface, but it's a part of collection concept, collection API, right? So what I will do now is let's work with map here. But why do we need map? See, the thing is when you work with list, let's say we have a list here and list of values we have. Okay, so we have list of values. Let's say uh, the values are 56, uh, 23, 67, and 92. Now we have these values, right? And let's say uh, if, it, if you work with array list here, or if you work with list, basically for these values, if you want to work with these values, you need to work with the indexes, right? We have to say 0, 1, 2, 3, right? But sometimes it's better to have a name or a different kind of index instead of having 0 and 1, 2, 3. Uh, example, let's say if we talk about phone book, we have a name and a number, right? So can we have something like this? I want to say these are my students' marks, right? So I want to say this marks belongs to Naveen. Uh, this marks belongs to, let's say, Hirsch. Uh, this marks is belong to Sushil. And we got Kiran. So instead of having index value, can we have a name to it? Okay, instead of having index value. So can we do it? And that is possible with the help of a concept of key and a value pair. So we have a key and a value. So example, this value, which is 56, 23, 67, 92, they are values. And the key for this is Naveen, the key for this is Hirsch, the key for this is Sushil, and the key for this is Kiran, right? And we can achieve these two things in one data type or data structure, which is called a map. So what is map? Map is basically a collection of, not map, map is a collection of key and a value pair. How do we achieve that? So what we can do is we can remove the entire section from here just to keep it clean. And let's work with, okay, we don't even need these imports now. So let's create a map. So where you can create a map is map. And okay, let's import the package for this. Again, java.util. And we can say this is students. That's the map of students and new. Now map itself is an interface, if you can see, and it supports key and a value pair. Now, if you remember when we talked about array list, it was having E there, right? Because it represents elements. In map, we have KV. It is just a character representation of what you are going to insert. Now this K, uh, this K and this V can be replaced with data types like string, integer, integer, float, or we can have student, string, whatever the type of you want to work with. So now we have to look for a class which implements this. So the class name is HashMap, right? And in this as well, we have to mention the type of it. The type of key we are working with is string. And the type of value you're working with here is integer, okay? And of course it can be anything. It can be string, student, it can be student, string, that's your choice. Uh, whatever data you're entering, but we got this map here. Now, once you got this map, I can simply add some values here. How do we add values? It's very simple. You say students dot. Now we don't have an add method. We have a put method. So you have to use put and we can specify two things, the key and a value. And as per our diagram, we have seen the key I want to insert is Naveen and the value is what? 56. And likewise, we can have all the values here. Copy, paste, paste, paste. And this is Hirsch. And the value here is 23. This is Sushil, the value is 67. Kiran, it's 92. So we got all this key and a value, right? And then if you want to print it, you can, you can actually do it. Before this, we were using list and then for every value here, we were using index, but now we have a logical name to it. It is much easier to work with names, right? Uh, so I will say it's out and here, let me print the students. Basically, I'm printing the map itself. I will compile this code and run. And you can see we got a map. We got Naveen 56, we got Social 67, we got Kiran 92, and Hearst 23. Now, one thing to observe, even this is not following a sequence. You can see we got Naveen first, then we got Social, we got Kiran, we got Hirsch. Okay, looks like more of a set, right? Let's explore more. Uh, okay, so we can do that. Otherwise, if you want to fetch a particular student, only one student, you can say, student dot, you can say get, and in this get, you can specify the key. Let's say I want to get the marks for not all the students, but let's say Hirsch. I can specify the key here. And if I compile this code and run, you can see we got 23. That's the marks for Hirsch. Okay, we can do that. Okay, one more thing. I want to print all the values. 
But then what I will do now is, let me say, during my school days, we used to, after the exams, when the paper is checked, we used to get the paper back to calculate the marks, right? So we used to turn the page, we used to calculate each and every marks. And at the end, once we add all the values of all the marks of each question, if that marks is more than the marks which you got on the paper, which is checked by your professor, we used to go and collect it, right? Of course, if you got extra marks, then you don't go there. But let's say, uh, Hush got uh, 23 and after calculation, we have changed it. So let's say students dot put, and now I'm saying hush, and the new value is let's say 45. There were a lot of mistakes in the paper. So let's say we got 45 here. Now tell me, will it add a new student as hush or will, will it replace the existing value? Let's see what happens. If I compile this code and if I run, you can see for hush, we only got one hush here, which is 45. We don't have two hush. That means, the key cannot be repeated. Keys are unique. The values can be. Example, I can have two students with the same number. And of course, we do get uh, same marks, right? If you copy it. Anyway, so uh, we cannot have keys repeated. So can we say these keys are actually a set? That's right. And the values are least here. So we have a set and a list combination to get, to get a map here. Okay, so what I, what I want to do now is I want to print all the values and that's why you can see there's no sequence here because it's a set. Okay, I want to print all the values but one by one. I want to use a for loop here. Can we do it? The problem is we don't have, see if you work with list and if you use a for loop it will give you one value at a time, right? There's no one value here. We have two, key and a value. So what you can do is, first of all, let me just get all the keys and let's see how it works. I will say students, I want to get all the keys. So do we have a method which will give me all the keys if I go down, down, down? Yeah, you can see that we have a key set. Oh, we were right, it's a set. Uh, so I'm printing all the key set now. So if I compile this code and run, oh, okay, so that we got all the keys. If key set gives me all the keys, uh, if I run a loop on this, if I say for, what's the type of key set? It's a string, right? So I can say string name, colon, it is coming from students dot key set. Okay, so what I'm doing is this key set will give me a set, right? And from that set, you are fetching one name at a time. And with that name, I'm printing first of all name as it is. And I will give a space in between, or maybe a colon. And then I can provide the, I want to get the value. How do you get the value? So you can say students dot, remember we have worked with this, get, and you can pass the key, which is name. Of course, right, your key is in, in, is in, in this name. Or maybe I can just to make it simple, instead of same name, I can say key itself. And here as well, I can say key. Here I can say key, right, simple. And now compile, run. Oh, can you see that we got key and a value there. So that's how you can print all the values from a map. Now why we are using a put method here is because when you say add, we are adding a new element. When you say put, it says, try to add the element. If you already have this key, just replace it. That's put. Okay, apart from this, do we have some more methods to explore? So if I say students dot, we got a put, we can also say get. If you, we can also get values, all the values. The way you have key set, which gives you all the keys. When you say value, it will give you all the values. Uh, apart from this, we can use uh, uh, remove to remove the particular element or the uh, particular entry. Uh, we can replace as well. Yeah, those are the methods we have and uh, please explore those methods to understand this mode. So that's how basically you can use map. In fact, apart from this, we also have a hash table. So if you can see, we have hash table here and both works almost same. If you compile this code and if you run this, you can see we got the same output. So what's the difference between hash table and hash map? If you go here and if you go on top, okay, so if you can see in the hash table code, it says the new collection implementation, which is hash table is synchronized. Now it depends upon which you want to use. So if you want to use a synchronized version, you can use hash table. If you want normal, we can use hash map. Now what is synchronized? If you remember, we have worked with threads. So if you have multiple threads working, then it's better to use hash table to make it synchronized. Right, so if you go up, or let's go to hash map to see what it says. So if you go to hash map, okay, it says if you want to work with multiple threads and if you still want to use hash map, then use 
synchronized externally. So if you want to use synchronized, use hash table, otherwise hash map works. So yeah, that's how basically you can use map and uh, that's how you can fetch the values.